Доброго времени суток. У нас э, очередная встреча с Дэвидом Хасавеем, известным евангелистом из Великобритании, который уже много-много лет служит людям в Восточной Европе, в Израиле и в других странах. Э, Дэвид, сколько лет ты уже служишь Богу как евангелист и проповедник? Well... I started preaching officially uh, when I was 18, and I'm now 80 years old, so I, I've been in full-time ministry for 62 years. But I'm still a young man. Мог бы поделиться с нашими зрителями каким-то наиболее ярким впечатлением, вот самое яркое впечатление а за эти последние 60 лет э, твоего служения Богу. Было ли что-то такое, что настолько впечатлило, что изменило твою жизнь, изменило твое отношение к людям, которым ты служишь? Well, there are quite a number of things. The, the first thing that was to change my life, of course, was going to Israel. Uh, in those days, I was very poor. <laughs> I couldn't afford to buy an air ticket. Uh, this is a long time ago. This was 1961. I wanted to be part of a big conference in Jerusalem. Uh, I was so determined to get there. It took me two years to organize it. And the only way to go was to go by road. Now, if, if you can imagine to travel from England right out to Jerusalem by road and back, it was more than 10,000 kilometers. But the interesting thing was that in order to do it, I had to go into the communist countries. And you're asking what influenced my life. Coming from the West, coming from the free countries. Yes, Israel had a big impact on my life. But the thing which changed my life was going into the communist countries. And I'm talking about uh, 1961. That's more than 50 years ago. And as you know, uh, because you've come from the communist countries, that was a very difficult time. And the two things which influenced me, the first was the reality of realizing that Believers like myself were imprisoned and being killed for their faith in God. And it's interesting because uh, what I saw then, in a way, was a parallel. The suffering of the Jews in the Holocaust. But now I was finding that ordinary Christians were persecuted in the same way. And some people say that actually the, the, the prison camps and the treatment of Christian believers in the Soviet Union was even worse than the treatment of the Jews. But if you can understand, Pavel, that having come out of the war, uh, being British, uh, and realizing that the concentration was on, on the sufferings of the Jews, Но, 
понимаем, что вот тогда в основном концентрировали внимание на страдании евреев. Now I understood it was not just the Jews, but also the Christians who were being persecuted and dying for their faith, just as the Jewish people. So that had a big impact on me. Uh, the next thing that happened for us, uh, because of the success of my visit, every, everybody wanted to go to Jerusalem. And I, I had to set up a travel company of my own. Nobody else would do it. I had to set the company up to take people by road into Israel. And this led to another thing which affected me. Because uh, we had to have the, the, the tour guides on the bus. And uh, of course they were trying to indoctrinate us in communism. But when the guides realized this was a, a, a British bus and had no hidden microphones on it, they began to tell us the truth. And because I have a very real and practical faith in God through Jesus Christ, I began to share this faith with the guides. And I, I can well remember that this particular girl, uh, during the journey, she said, oh, she said, um, I just wish I had a Bible. And I, I, I had more than one with me, actually, and I gave her a, a, a New Testament to read. But the interesting thing was on the return journey, uh, I was asking her, uh, have you read this uh, book? Now, now, obviously, this girl was not a believer. She was educated under the communist system and she would have regarded herself as an atheist. But what was to change my life was what she said. Firstly, she said, I'd like to have this book in my own language. And eventually I, I took her some. But I, I think this is what affected me as an evangelist. He was an atheist girl. <laughs> as you know what things were like under communism. <laughs> and she, when I gave her the Bible, she said, oh, my friends, my, my sister, my friends, they all want Bibles, they all want to know more. And, Pavel, what I understood was that amongst the secular people, if they don't know who Jesus is, if they know nothing about the Gospel, of course, what can they do? But when we present to them the simple, practical story of Jesus, I, I mean, remember that Jesus came into, into a very religious country, dominated by, by the Jewish religion, by the arguments of scribe against Pharisee, and so on. But there were two things that impressed the people in Jesus' day. Obviously, there was something about the personality of this man, Jesus. 
but it was the simplicity of the message that he brought. And the ordinary people loved it. They followed him in their thousands. And of course there was the, the, the miraculous because he was healing the sick. And what I realized in those early days under traveling into communist countries, if I could present the same simplicity of the message that Jesus brought, and because obviously I'm not Jesus, <laughs> I'm not a prophet, I'm just an ordinary man, and the people I was talking to saw me as an ordinary person. But if I could show them what this Jesus Christ meant in my life, they, want, they wanted to know more. And I'll, I'll tell you something else, uh, Pavel. Uh, this is not something I would tell in a normal meeting. <laughs> uh, yes, for a, a period in my life I was a minister of a church. Uh, obviously I had to go to the theological seminary and to graduate uh, five years of training. But then I, I became a minister in a, in a church, talking like all other ministers do, opening the Bible, saying, look, this is, this is what it says. But one day God said something very strange to me. He said, shut up. Stop talking. I'm tired of listening to you. He said, why don't you leave your church and go out there and do all the things you're talking about? Can you imagine the shock for a preacher? <laughs> God telling me, shut up, stop talking. Go and do it. And you know, that really has been my life. Because God said, don't come back and talk about it until you've done it yourself. And as you know, when I'm speaking, Pavel, uh, I'm talking so often about how it, how it is in my life. Uh, my practical experience. I talk about the scripture. And then I say how it works in life. And people understand that. As you know, I, I, I should have been 10 years in a communist prison. I, I've had four attempts to kill me. <laughs> so I, I've had a very practical experience out there. And that's how I feel that God wants me to relate to people. Because after all, that's what Jesus did. God sent his son. Live in the world. Mix with the people. The good, the bad. And you know, the big criticism of Jesus was that he ate with sinners. <laughs> But that's the only way you could learn about them. And that's why this other thing changed my life. It was actually being in a prison. As far as I was concerned, I was, I, I, I was innocent. The only crime was smuggling Bibles in and preaching the gospel. But living with ordinary common criminals, strange thing is I learned to love them. 
uh, most Christians think that's strange. But that's what Jesus found, isn't it? He lived with them. He could see their problems. But he loved them. And uh, that's what I'm trying to reflect when I'm speaking in the meetings. That I'm no different to anybody out there. As far as the communist system is concerned, I was a common criminal. But they made a big mistake. Uh, it was a double mistake. Firstly, shutting me up with the criminals. <laughs> I learned to love them. <laughs> and secondly, that was the ultimate test of my faith. God had said, go out there and do all the things you're talking about. Now, in the prison, I had the ultimate test. Could prayer get me out of the prison? Well, it, it did. Because the most amazing thing was I, I prayed for a year and then eventually the British Prime Minister came. And I actually flew home on the airplane with the British Prime Minister. And he said, oh, I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> he said, I've helped Jews. He said, I'm not a Christian believer. <laughs> he said, it's the first time I've helped a Christian. Well, I knew why because I had prayed. And this was a very practical answer to prayer. So when I'm speaking to people, speaking from my heart, and speaking from the experience of my life, вот интересно для меня, по крайней мере, ты когда привозил Библии в Восточную Европу, Ну, ты их провозил в автобусах, контрабандой и так далее. А как ты их распространял? Ты имел какие-то контакты с местными верующими, с местными церквями? Или это просто было вот случайным людям раздавали? a small organization. My big job was to cross the border. And I had built a large compartment. You know, I could carry two tons of Bibles. But I had friends who would go across the border in small minivans, minibuses. They would make the contact with the believers in the country. I would take the bus. Uh, we were staying overnight in a hotel and I would take the bus out into the country. Then we would transfer the Bibles from the bus into smaller cars and smaller vehicles and then they would distribute it. Now, it was quite important that it happened this way. It meant that I only met these believers in the dark. I, didn't, I couldn't recognize their faces. I didn't know their names. And when I was under interrogation in the prison, the first thing they wanted to know was, give us the names of the people who receive your Bibles. And I could say very truthfully, I don't know the names. And the big question, when I was arrested, if I would give these names away, those believers would have suffered more than me in prison. 
thank God not one believer went into prison. To me, that was important. Но ты ведь с ними общался все равно. Вот скажи, какие у тебя были впечатления человека западного мира? Выросшего в свободной Англии. С детства верующего. Относительно веры вот тех людей, которые находились под огромным прессингом, они, может быть, даже вынуждены были переписывать от руки. Я знаю такие истории, когда люди переписывали от руки целую Библию, чтобы иметь возможность ее читать. Как бы ты оценил веру этих людей, вот тех людей, которые были в этих невыносимых, нечеловеческих условиях? Well, the, the, what I saw was that they had a much deeper faith than we had in the West. And I think that's reflected today very strongly. I'm finding even when people are converted that have come from these East countries, their faith is so much stronger. And I'm sorry to say that what I'm finding of faith in the West is quite shallow. It's so easy to become a Christian. You see, the same thing happened in effect in the third century after Christ. When the Roman Emperor Constantine was converted, if you wanted favor with the Roman government, you became a Christian. And to a large extent, that was when the decline of the church began. Because from that moment, the church wasn't so much based on a practical faith, which had gone through tribulation and testing. It, it was based on a, a, theory, a theoretical belief. And I fear that the Western church is suffering from that today. And although, yes, I can see the need to, for me to minister in the East, I find the Eastern Christians from your countries are much stronger in their faith. Я уверен в том, что э, многие люди сегодня на Востоке, на восто в странах Восточного Блока, Восточной Европы, испытывают серьезные испытания. Их не преследуют за веру, но у них серьезные экономические проблемы, кризис, э, и многие вынуждены ехать на Запад, в Англию или в Ирландию для того, чтобы заработать себе на жизнь. И давай, может быть, помолимся о тех людях, кто сегодня нуждается и кто ищет Божьего чуда для того, чтобы изменились обстоятельства его жизни. Я прошу тебя помолиться за людей в Восточной Европе. Both Pavel and I have been through difficult experiences. But Father, we pray together that every person watching this program would experience your personal intervention in their life to solve those problems, to answer those prayers, to heal the sickness, to solve the financial crisis, all the other problems, whether it's drugs or alcohol or 
even physical abuse. I want you to say this prayer with me. Oh God, I need your help. I want to trust you. I need your help. Answer my prayer and help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pavel. The important thing is this, that we're able to bring you news of revival and of the power of God from right around the world in so many different countries and also while on the television broadcast you only see just a short edited program of my message on this program you're able to see and hear the whole of the message so i want to encourage you to watch this program i want to recommend to you three new very special little books i've written these specially for you and the first one is called god is your father you are his. This is absolute revelation of the relationship that you and I have with God as our Father. The second one is, your faith will work. And this one is based on a lot of my own personal experience of how faith can actually work and change in your everyday life. The third one, step into the fire. And in this, I want to show you how the power of your own salvation and the fire and the power that you can receive in your own life from God, it's not limited to me, you can have it as well. These little books, so that you can easily buy them, are only two pounds each. And because they're special, if you get all three, you can have them for just five pounds. Send for them straight away. Now, this one I'm showing you is the latest one, your new self. I want you to contact us, only two pounds. Please send for this booklet. This is Prophetic Vision. It's the most powerful prophetic magazine in Europe today. It's read by almost half a million people in 132 countries around the world. Send for it free and let God show you the path to revival in your life, in your nation.